uh, Tord and uh, Takeshi. This very similar matchup, the Galisopod Garboder deck versus the Drampa Garboder deck. And we'll see if there's a different outcome. Uh, Tord on the Drampa side was able to win in round number one. And we'll see if uh, Alex can do the same. A little bit different of a version for him though. He is playing that new stadium card, Poe Town that we uh, haven't seen much of this weekend. And oh my goodness, look at that. <laughs> oh wow. Double Garbo Toxin prize. First of all, most people don't run double Garbo Toxin, but uh, looks like that's what's going on here, but not this game. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's maybe not uh, as good in this matchup, but it still can be good when you're able to sort of control when abilities are played for both sides of the field. And uh, I think in general, I've found that decks that decide to opt to run less than three of the trash lanch can sometimes suffer in the mirror just because you want a steady stream of them throughout the game. Yep, so here we go, round number seven between Naoto Suzuki and Alex Silva here at the World Championships. Get on social media, use the hashtag play Pokemon. Tell us how bad Alex's first turn was. <laughs> yeah, I attached an energy and passed and nothing else. I feel like this tournament has been by far the most dead opening hands I've seen ever. Um, certainly there is some merit in running the most consistent deck possible, but I just cannot believe how many times I've seen a draw pass just to open. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't even make a lot of sense, right? You're running more of these consistency cards than ever. The Tapu Lele GX, uh, you have four Ultra Ball that you can play to search for Tapu Lele GX. Uh, you play three or four of them in your deck that can grab supporter cards and somehow still yep. we see opening hands where uh, players are just unable to do very much. Three or four Sycamore, three or four and you've got the Bridget you could open with. It just makes me wonder uh, if it's either just a crazy coincidence or sometimes there is merit in just running even more consistency cards to the uh, to the toward levels of extreme where you have that fourth Tapu Lele instead of the third. Uh, over on Alex's side, what can he do? Just uh, continually pile on energy and attack? Yeah. He's in a lot of trouble if uh, Nyoto has a choice band, Galisopod GX, and an energy. This game is already over. Oh man, I just realized that uh, Nyoto's running my favorite kind of energies, <laughs> the Matrix. I think they're from Emerald. Yeah. Yeah, all the way back. Uh, they're just my favorite holographic energy. There we go. There's Galisopods. Pretty much all he needs is what? The choice band? Yeah, that's it. But it looks like he doesn't have it. Uh, unfortunately for me, he doesn't have much of a hand beyond this. So if Alex is able to top deck something here, he could get out of this and he does find a Trubbish. Trubbish is something. Um, you could attack. I think you could even use the GX attack, couldn't you? Uh, it only heals like, benched Pokemon. Oh, so it can't, can't heal itself. <laughs> you can't Tapu Pure yeah. GX. I mean, you could, well, but you, it wouldn't yeah, do anything. It would, it would be bad. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, just go out swinging and hope that you can draw something over the next turn, I suppose. I think it's more valuable to keep your Trubbish in play. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I guess you can attach another energy and go for a bigger energy drive here. Choice band, even. That's a, it's a decent, like, first half of the health, but... Yeah, it's 110 damage. It's not bad. Uh, and Alex actually wants this Tapu Lele to get knocked out. He has a rescue stretcher in hand, and he can actually get back Tapu Lele GX and then uh, play it back down and use Wonder Tag for a knockout. So here we go with the Acerola uh, over on Nauta's side. Just such a great card in combination with the Galisopod, removing all the energy, or uh, removing all the damage, bringing the energy and the evolution back to your hand, making it very easy to switch between uh, one copy and a new one. And uh, Alex finally gets to basically begin playing now that he can wonder tag for a supporter card. Got to wonder if he'll just grab a Bridget, uh, even though he's very far behind at this point. He's not set up at all. He's behind on prize cards. He doesn't have any energy in play. Uh, will he settle for the Bridget just to get some basic Pokemon out? Or will he uh, go for something like an N instead? Yeah, I think uh, you may want to go for the more aggressive route. Bridget is great on turn one, but on sort of this like turn three when your opponent already has attackers ready to go, you almost don't want to play that much slower than your opponent. Uh, maybe bring them down to a lower hand size. Find a couple of basics that you're looking for along the way and then fight from there. Well, looks like he will be able to power up that Tapu Lele GX once again and at least unleash an energy drive for 90 damage this turn. Not exactly where you want to be, but it's better than doing nothing. And he will be able to end his opponent down to a four card hand. So maybe his opponent will struggle a little bit because he hasn't really played many cards this game. 
Uh, his deck is very much full of cards he doesn't want to see right now. And it's not super likely that he'll draw a supporter off of four cards. So uh, this could be a start to a comeback. I don't see any additional Pokemon that Alex can bench, but he has plenty of supporters. He does have an Ultra Ball as well, so that could actually help set up. Maybe even get uh, something like another Trubbish or even get a uh, Drampa into play. He's going to want something that can hit a little bit heavier than Tapu Lele by the end of this. But I think even the fact that Tapu Lele can attack like this just goes to show how strong of a Pokemon it is. The fact that it can sort of help you in a desperation situation beyond just finding the supporter from your deck. Yeah, there's a reason we see two, three, or even four of this card in just about every deck these days. Uh, the ability is incredible. The attack is great, has uses in so many situations. Uh, it's not as strong as it used to be. You know, we used to have the Mewtwo EX X-Ball kind of dominated the format when it first came out. Uh, I think Pokemon have just gotten so big that it hasn't been as powerful anymore, but there's still just situations like this where you're like, cool, I'll drop an energy and hit you for 90 damage. And so that's exactly what we see. Energy drive over on Alex's side, ball back over to Naoto. And he hasn't played Oof. a ton of draw yet, but you don't necessarily have to if you can just keep bouncing <laughs> your Pokemon like this. Yep, another Acerola gets to return that Pokemon and all the cards attached to it into his hand and just drop down another Glycopod GX. Uh, first impression only requires one Grass Energy to use. So you just scoop up your Pokemon, play everything back down, hit for 120 damage, rinse and repeat. Yeah, that uh, end definitely did not stop Naoto uh, in any way. Yeah, so far it's been all Naoto Suzuki in this match. Uh, the player from Japan is uh, essentially one win away from locking up a position in the top eight here at the World Championships. He would have six wins after this. You have to think uh, maybe just a draw would get him straight into the top eight at the World Championships. Uh, perhaps you know, getting another Japanese player winning the World Championships after uh, Shintaro Ito took down this event last year. Yeah, they've definitely come in uh, very seriously this tournament. Almost all the Japanese players, uh, besides the one fire deck that we were able to see earlier, uh, have been running this specific build. Uh, Trash Lanch paired with Galisopod, and it definitely does have a lot of answers to a lot of different types of decks, including the Mirror. Sure seems like it. Uh, it's not a deck, I don't, I don't think anyone had this deck on their radar heading into the weekend. Uh, I'll be interested to see how it matches up against things like Gardevoir GX. As you saw in the last round, Diego was able to overcome this kind of deck with Gardevoir GX. So maybe that's a matchup we'll see more of in future rounds. And oh, we see the Espeon EX come down on Alex's side. Uh, that's a card we've really only seen in the Decidueye decks this weekend, but now we're seeing Espeon in combination with that Potown. That's kind of a cool combo. Yeah, uh, over time, if you're forcing your opponent to uh, like evolve and take damage every time, uh, that can work well. You can get sort of a good spread going on. Potown also helps you self-damage your own Pokemon so that you can deal extra with Berserk and Drampa. <laughs> Another Acerola. Acerola <laughs> just sees like a thumbs up over on Alex's side. Like, oh, here it comes. Uh, even a field blower to discard both the Potown and the Floatstone mm -hmm. off that opposing Garboder and uh, just... The same thing we're seeing. Acerola, pick up my stuff, play it back down. First impression again. I really feel like Acerola is one of the strongest healing cards of the format right now. Brand new card. It, uh, we've seen like stronger cards than Acerola, but right now uh, Acerola's only limitation is the Pokemon needs to have damage on it, and then you can just pick the entire thing up. That works very well with Golisopod. It's not often you're dealing over 200 damage in a single attack, and if you don't, well, then you have to do it all over again. So now Naoto down to two prize cards. And Alex has not mounted much of an offense. Uh, and anything he has done has been blanked by those Acerola, that powerful new supporter card from that Burning Shadows expansion. Uh, coming into this tournament, I think there's a big question. How much did Burning Shadows really impact the metagame? And I think we've gotten our answer this weekend. A lot. Some of the most powerful decks have been Gardevoir GX, Galisopod GX, Ho-Oh GX. Uh, we've seen Guzma everywhere, Acerola everywhere, even this Po Town right here. Uh, we've just seen all sorts of cards from the new expansion be great. But also decks like this Trash Lanch one with Drampa GX continue to be powerful as well. 
It's been cool to see all these new cards combine. Yeah, it's um, my favorite thing that we've done that's been new for the World Championships uh, as of late is where the newest set sort of gets to roll out uh, alongside the World Championships. So there's surprises for everybody, not just surprises of decks that people may or may not play, but the surprise of what new cards are coming from this new set. So there we see uh, fully charged Berserk attack from Drampa GX, but because of all those Acerolas, no knockout this time. Yeah. But uh, Naoto is in a weird spot. He has Guzma in hand. I think he might even have another Acerola. Uh, I can't really tell right now, but he, he can't knock out the active. That's the big thing. He has a float stone on his active Glycopod GX, so he can't attach a choice band. Uh, if he could, he could have gone choice band, double colus, and then crossing cut GX for the game. But instead, it looks like he's going to retreat and just use flying flip to set up for an easier knockout. Yeah, and that's uh, sort of the beauty of Flying Flip. It's just an easy little uh, like pinch hitter attacker that you can put between turns and it helps set up knockouts while being a great Pokemon that you can throw up for one prize card and having free retreat. So is this the beginning of a comeback for Alex? Uh, if he has a Guzma or Lysander of his own, he can bring out that Golisopod GX and kind of finish it off with another Berserk and perhaps open the door for a comeback. The uh, Garbotoxin Garbodor is actually coming in handy quite a bit. Naoto got a Tapu Lele GX out of his prize cards that he cannot use Wonder Tag anymore because of Garbotoxin. So this is the kind of situation where this Trash Lanch deck can come back. You have the Garbotoxin lock in place. You play an N, put your opponent down to a low hand size and uh, unleash your big attacks late in the game and just hope they can't draw anything. So we saw uh, Devating playing the Ultra Ball. I assume that would be to get another Garboder. Uh, here comes a Field Blower, getting rid of the Float Stone, adding another one uh, to Naoto's discard pile. I'm not sure how many items are in there now, but I can only imagine not a ton yet. Yeah, We've seen just a lot of Acerolas. Uh, but here we go. Here's the end, bringing Naoto down to two cards. There's no Guzma knockout here, but... Nauta is going to be brought down to a very small hand size. Yeah, if there's one thing wrong with this game so far for Nioto, it's that he actually hasn't drawn many cards. He's done very simple plays the entire game, and they have gotten him quick prize cards. But as we enter this late stage where his opponent is playing N and putting him down to two cards, there's so many bad cards in his deck that he doesn't want to draw anymore. Uh, the odds of him finding what he needs are quite low, and he'll need to top deck something here to even have a chance uh, as this game continues. So there we see uh, just the single prize knockout for Alex. Now it's back over to Naoto and uh, Floatstone attached to the active. Pokemon down, but does he have any way to draw more cards? Or is he just going to attack here? First impression. Looks like that's all we've got. Yeah, his Still last card, decent pressure. His last card is a field blower. Uh, he has really nothing to follow this up. If this Golisopod GX gets knocked out, Alex can start a massive comeback here. The question is, uh, where can Alex come from? Can he actually finish off the knockout here with a trash avalanche? I'm not 100% sure on the numbers, but that would certainly be helpful. Put it so that your opponent can only take a one prize knockout with you in the active. Yeah, I think that's what he needs to be going for here. Uh, there, let's see, there's 60 HP left on the Golisopod GX, so I got to think there's at least two item cards in there. So if you get a choice band, trash avalanche, uh, that should be a knockout. Yeah, I think that was, and he had to play a versus secret one point for Acerola, I know. Yeah, he's played there. a field blower. So uh, he's certainly played a couple item cards. Trash Lanch should be on the table for a knockout. So here we see another Garboder coming into play. He actually has three uh, ready to go. <laughs> they're big time damaged, but sort of at this point in the game, you sort of just accept that they're going to get knocked out one way or another. They sort of just exist as these one energy nukes where you could knock out Pokemon uh, very quickly. Yeah, he actually has four Garboder in play. <laughs> well, yeah, four, four Garboder, three Trash Lanch. <laughs> I don't but think yeah, I've ever seen this that. Is, that's all you could ever hope for with this deck. So there we see Trash Lanch knock out two prizes. Naoto gets to go up, but uh, like you said, had a pretty empty hand. Oh, oh, wow, what a top deck. Unbelievable. He had nothing and now just top decks the teammates. Now, fortunately for Alex, he will not lose this turn. Uh, teammates takes up the supporter for the turn, so we won't see a Guzma knockout or anything like that, but uh, I think this will put Alex in a pretty rough situation. My guess is we'll see 
Naoto grab a Galisopod GX with his teammates and then perhaps a game-winning Guzma to follow up on the next turn. Uh, he can simply knock out this uh, Garboder with first impression. There's nothing on Alex's board that can respond to it and then play Guzma next turn for the win. Yeah, I uh, wasn't 100% sure. It's hard to tell which cards are which. Uh, Rescue Stretcher was the one who grabbed. I was like, I didn't see a Glycopod. It's a Glycopod. Ah. <laughs> it's just one from the discard pile. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was another field blower, but it was a gold Rescue Stretcher instead. <laughs> Everything is fully rared out over on Naoto's deck, so it's uh, <laughs> difficult to tell sometimes which card is which. But there so, we go. A first impression knockout. One prize away from taking this first game. Yeah, now that Potown damage could actually be relevant here if Alex can play a field blower on his own Drampa GX, uh, drop a choice band on it, and then end his opponent to one card. He can berserk for 180 damage, get the knockout, go down to one prize, and perhaps steal this game where he was so far behind. But it does take a lot. Uh, it, it requires, yeah, Field Blower, Choice Band, and N, and I don't know if he really has any of those cards right now. Very specific cards that he's probably only got a few copies of left in his deck at this point. Yeah, and uh, does he have to end this turn if he gets the knockout? I think so, because Naoto played teammates. Uh, you only saw him play one of the cards, which was Rescue Stretcher, so you know he took another good one. But maybe you just kind of hope that his other card is uh, something that doesn't guarantee him a win straight away. Yeah, I, don't, I guess if you like could deduce, I, was it Guzma? I wasn't 100% sure. Uh, the two he grabbed, cards he took were actually Guzma and Professor Sycamore. Ah, uh, okay. So grab double supporters yeah. uh, just to make sure that he has something to work yeah, with. He already had the Glycopod with the Rescue Stretcher in hand, so. Yeah, he's certainly got a win lined up if you don't take a knockout here. Uh, and if you do, he can probably draw into the Trash Lanch and an energy to get a knockout. It's uh, very low odds. I think he's trying to do everything he can to just burn cards out of the deck. Versus Seeker. Yeah, he's going to take the, the risk. That's okay. kind of what you have to do when your back's at the walls. Do the one thing that could maybe allow you to win. Drawing three cards needs two very specific ones here. And not only that, uh, even if he misses, there's no guarantee Naoto gets a knockout. First impression would only be doing 30 damage. Yeah, he would need something like Guzma or... Uh, oh, <laughs> I saw double items. <laughs> Choice band, no field blower to come first. Yeah, I got the super rod instead. Uh, Naoto would need a double colorless energy or Guzma in order to get the game-winning knockout here. So at this point, the only question is which Pokemon does Alex put in the active spot? Uh, does he trash a lanch for a big amount of damage? Or uh, perhaps send out Tapu Lele GX, since then he would not lose to a double colorless energy. Yeah, I think both those are solid choices. Does he even have an energy uh, no, to use doesn't. a trash a lanch? Nope. Yeah, I guess that's tough. Pretty much anything but throwing up the Drampa is probably the safest bet. Well, Drampa does yeah. have 40 HP left, <laughs> so yeah. he can take a hit from first impression. You also lose if they just have a double colorless energy. Yeah, which sure, is, uh, but uh, I mean, you lose to a lot of stuff here. Sure. <laughs> I, I guess you lose to the least amount of stuff immediately if you throw Lele up, but it's still not pretty. Uh, yeah. You really wanted to get that crazy combo off this turn. Yeah, I think I'm just going berserk here. Um, if your opponent has it, he has it. If not, uh, then you have a chance to win still. Well, here we go. Berserk, not quite a knockout, but putting Alex pretty close. We'll have to see what Naoto gets off of his draw. Oh, he's and actually his got one a card. big wheel. Oh, huh. Uh, how many cards does he have left? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Is it more one, than 10? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, ah, there's just exactly one card 11. left after that. Wow. <laughs> okay, big wheel coming in there. Does Naoto have the game winner? Oh, oh Professor Sycamore. Sycamore, very high chance of grabbing oh, yeah. the double to end the Choice game Choice band, double colorless, yeah. uh, floatstone, garboder, energy is a winner. Um, or none of the above. Yeah, did I not see it? <laughs> it's hard to tell. I feel like if he had it, he slams it down. That's at least what I would do. Yeah, he might have missed. He might be 10 damage short of the win here with that first impression. Oh, wow. And if that's the case, Alex could, uh, oh, nope, choice ban. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. <Oops. laughs> it's gold. I'm not used to all these gold cards yep. that I normally see. 
I see the, the full art supporters a lot, but I don't often see people fully gold out the items. <laughs> there we go. Noto able to grab that first game. Uh, what a uh, like display of just how quick pressure you can bring with this deck. Almost crumbled a little bit at the end, but was able to hold on. Yeah, it seemed like every time he needed something, he drew it at the right moment. Uh, top decking that teammates was huge. Uh, off the end of one, got the Professor Sycamore to get a fresh hand of seven, find that game-winning choice band. Uh, he, even though he had a lot of cards left in his deck and a lot of bad things he could have drawn, so many things like Floatstone, another Trubbish or Garboder, or just random things that he uh, just didn't get a chance to discard over the course of the game that are not great late game. Uh, he somehow avoided them, he drew the correct cards, and uh, finished off game number one. But if you're Alex, you have to feel pretty good about that, I think. Your start was horrendous. Um, you did nothing for the first couple turns, barely drew a Trubbish just to not get benched out and lose. Basically, you started the game out like behind two prizes before you got to do anything, and it was still super close at the end. So at the end of that, I think you still feel okay if you're Alex. Obviously bummed out that you lost, but uh, feeling confident heading into game two. And yeah, that game got so close toward the end that you kind of forget that Alex had, like, attached pass. He attacked with, like, two different Tapu Lele uh, before he even got anything going. So we'll see uh, if he's able to start with even a slightly good hand, uh, how he can turn it around. Indeed, and we'll have to see if our Japanese player can finish off this match and essentially Ooh. lock up a spot in the top eight. Well, they going to be tough with those prizes. They weren't used last game very much, but the uh, both of the trash will inch Garbode are in the prizes right now. And I believe he only runs the two, right? Uh, yeah, both of them. Oh, that might they make things problematic. Game one, he prized both Garbotoxin. Game two, he prized both trash will inch. <laughs> <laughs> you, you only get to play one or the other, yes. apparently. <laughs> so right off the bat, and from Alex, uh, pretty much instantly already has a better start than last time. Got a couple of Pokemon and uh, a couple of cards to draw, too. Yeah, did not start off with that Bridget to get a bunch of Pokemon on the bench, but this is about as good. Uh, getting some Pokemon onto the bench. Oh, no energy, though. But, oh, missing the energy drop is very bad. That's one of the most important things you need to do with this deck. You don't have any sort of energy acceleration or anything like that. Every attachment for the turn counts, and missing one is painful. Speaking of energy, look how many energy are in Naoto's hand right now. <laughs> that is a poker hand if I've ever seen one. Yeah, got two grass, two double colors, two rainbow, triple pair. Unfortunately, it uh, looks like, I, I would assume he's going to be grabbing Lele. And then do you grab basics of that Lele or do you just grab an N to try and recycle? Yeah, I think you need to take N. Your hand beyond this is pretty bad. Uh, you could bridge it for more basics, but then you don't have anything in your hand besides energy, so it's not really worth it. Uh, and you definitely don't want to Sycamore away the rest of those energy. Uh, as we saw in round one, that can be quite dangerous. <laughs> yes, opens the door to Righteous Edge for yeah. game. So, and it looks like the right play here. Uh, even opting to discard two rainbow energy in the process, which uh, is interesting. Maybe understanding that rainbow not very good against Righteous Edge. Yeah, not at all. Uh, the regular basic grass energy at least gets to hold on for a turn without getting pitched. So Nyoto did get his energy attachment for the turn. It's actually less important for his deck than it is for Alex. Uh, Galisapa GX can do a big attack for one energy, whereas Drampa can't use Berserk without multiple turns of attachment, but still going to welcome that first turn energy attachment. And we'll have to see what Alex decides to do here. He probably won't do any big offense on this turn, but uh, he's going to want at least an energy attachment to start powering up that Drampa GX. So we've seen Ultra Ball. I don't know if he has any other ways to draw, so we may see yet another like, Tapu Lele to get more cards. He maybe had an N in hand, so this could be a Garboder. Yeah, he seems to value that Garbotoxin pretty highly in this matchup, so we could see that come out right away. Stop abilities from Nyoto's side. Uh, stop any future Tapu Lele GX wonder tags. And go from there. Uh, if he doesn't have a supporter, yeah, he would grab another Tapu Lele GX. Get maybe another N or Professor Sycamore. Uh, or just another Trubbish. So, another Trubbish down. Uh, he has, there we go, Garbatoxin, <laughs> Trashalanche, and a clean end. 
empty handed and drawing six more cards. All right, Alex certainly will be looking for energy off of this N for six cards. Uh, Nioto probably just wanting to draw a Golisopod GX and a way to move that Trubbish out of the active spot. Then he can hit for that turn two first impression. Well, there's a double colorless energy. Looks like that's the only one that he'll have to work with. It's yep, certainly better fine. than nothing. Yeah. So we see uh, retreating up. I think we're going to see a, a big wheel. It's going to start spinning. Yeah, flip that GX marker over. <laughs> Flip that hand into the deck, draw 10 new cards. There, there we, we go. go. GX attack has been used. Uh, not a super powerful one like some other ones, but, uh, well, you can argue this is pretty powerful. Yeah, Shuffling in your is, hand to draw 10 cards. This is one of the best ones, I would say. Yeah. Best because it's on a basic, best because it's only one energy, works in almost every deck, and uh, 10 cards. That can help you set up just, just about anything you want. Go ten fresh cards. Look at that. <laughs> or Alex Silva. <laughs> just to have ten cards in hand. Yeah. It feels so powerful. <laughs> it's yeah, we'll see if Nyoto can respond here. Uh, get the rainbow down on his trubbish. Can he get uh Galisopod GX up and running? And perhaps he, you know if he had Guzma, he could target down one of those Garboder, get an easy knockout with first impression. Uh, if he has float stone, he could simply attack for 120 damage. We'll see what he wants to do. So if we see uh, more Trubbish down, he has more Trubbish than he can actually evolve right now with the prizes that he has and an end <laughs> to follow up. Yeah, so he's going to need a float stone here in order to attack for the turn. Otherwise, that Trubbish is going to be stuck in the active spot. So off these six cards, he needs to find one of his float stone. Does he run the full four, I would guess, in a deck like this? Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, we'll see if he can find one of those four. If he can't, there will be no attack this turn. And I don't see it. Yeah, hard to tell. I don't think I see it. I see some golden cards, but I don't think it's there's, any. Uh, there's no yeah, gold. There's no stone. golden floodstone. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with that, it looks like he'll be forced to just pass here. Not what you want to see when you're running this aggressive deck that can it normally attack so quickly. So now Alex will be able to maybe pull off some attack here. Uh, just going to put a rainbow energy on his bench, Drampa GX. And looks like going to play Guzma going after the Galisopod GX. Uh, I think this is a smart play. It uh, forces it active, so uh, your opponent can't just retreat at first impression. And we see the Po Town come into play as well. Now, this is a, a pretty good spot to be in. You can't really do any Acerola tricks right now. There's not uh -oh. another Wind Pot on the bench, but you know what you can do? Double colorless, choice band. There's a GX attack on this card that is nasty. Crossing cut GX. 150 damage doesn't look too intimidating, but with the choice band, it adds up to 180, the perfect amount to knock out Drampa GX. And Glycopod GX gets to run away to the bench after it does all the damage. So it's a big hit and run attack. He gets to get a big knockout and then switch into something that uh, can take a hit for him or he doesn't have to put that big GX in danger. It's definitely going to feel bad. You played the Guzma to sort of set this up, and the damage can certainly help you get a knockout with an additional attack. But in a way, you sort of helped Naoto, uh, at least uh, with this strategy. Indeed. Uh, who knows if he would have had a float stone to even retreat if uh, Alex didn't do that for him, but there's no real way for you to know that. And now Alex has to follow up here. Uh, if he could find a double colorless energy, choice band, <laughs> Guzma, and a Garboder to get some damage on his Pokemon thanks to the Potown, he could get a knockout on that Glyspot GX. But if he's missing any piece of that puzzle, and I think he's one card short, uh, he won't be able to pull it off. Yeah, I see Versus Seeker pulling up the Guzma, so that's one of the pieces. I don't think he has the double colorless energy. Uh, he has it, just played oh, it on the top of Lele. Okay. So double down on top of Lele. Yeah, Guzma so up. This is doing uh, 100 damage right now. Not quite a knockout. Uh, 60 short still. Yeah, just uh, one way to apply pressure without necessarily sacrificing one of your Drampa. I'm trying to see. Yeah, maybe. This, this just does not look good for Alex. Uh, he'll probably be met with an Acerola picking up 
this uh, Galisopod GX and being replayed then a cross or not a crossing cut but a first impression for 120 uh, and then we have to keep track of how many item cards are in Alex's discard pile as well uh, you can see just why this Galisopod version is so powerful it matches up so well against Drampa GX and Garboder uh, first impression 120 damage perfect amount to knock out an opposing trash lanch Garboder uh, we saw the choice band plus crossing cut enough to knock out Drampa GX in one attack. And there's nothing in this Trash Lanch deck that can really knock out Galisopod in one attack. So Acerola essentially healing off the damage just makes it an uphill battle. Now I'm trying to see if there is an Acerola or access to it. We're just going to see a Guzma uh, over on Naoto's side pulling up Trash Lanch Garboder. And is he going to come back in for another swing? I guess he's checking how many item cards are in his opponent's discard pile. Uh, if there's at least three, he can use a trash lanch of his own to get the knockout. That and seems, I think there were three. Seems like that's the option. Was able to finally get one of his Garboders out of the prize cards. And now here it comes, taking out the trash. <laughs> <laughs> taking out the trash with the trash lanch. And now to will go down to three prizes gets his other trash lanch Garboder out of his prizes. And how can Alex respond to this? Uh, there's that Glycopod GX on the bench with a bunch of damage on it. But uh, he also kind of has to deal with the active Garboder. He is 20 short with the Tapu Lele GX. He would need one more energy attachment to energy drive for the knockout. But that might end up being his best play. Or he could just go for Guzma. Uh, oh, man. Guzma turning on his boy Galisopod, uh, being used to target down <laughs> the big bug, and uh, we're going to see an energy drive. Yeah, uh, energy drive allows Alex to take two prizes. It takes basically the heaviest hitter out of Naoto's uh, setup, unless he can get another Galisopod going. Uh, but this one does just have the one energy attached. It's still going to be a tough battle, I think. Uh, Naoto is able to come out to such a lead, but that's definitely what you're looking for, is just a way to clear out Galisopod number one. Looks like he does have one more Trash Lanch Garboder in hand. He can play down here, but uh, not doing a lot of damage. I think it's doing 80 right now, uh, which is fine. It sets up kind of a two-hit knockout on Tapu Lele GX once you have a choice band involved. But uh, what will he decide to play here? He has teammates and also a Versus Seeker and actually decides to go for the Guzma, targeting down these Trubbish and Garboder taking these easy knockouts so that at the end of the game, he just has to wipe out one GX to win. Yeah, this is often a pretty safe way to go. Uh, he has lost sort of the option to use the GX attack to clear the game out with the Golisopod, but I think eventually Garboder can also do the job. And now Alex, he has to decide what to do here. He could attach energy to his Tapu Lele GX and simply energy drive for a knockout. Does he have an N here to disrupt Nioto? If he did, that could be a pretty strong play. Uh, looks like he has teammates, but I don't see an N anywhere. And then this opens the question of, do you um, go for the Berserk with Drampa GX or just continue to attack with Energy Drive? Yeah, they're both high HP Pokemon that can hit heavily. You're only grabbing one prize card either way. It looks like he's eyeing up another Trubbish just to make sure that he can actually attack with a Trash Lanch at some point during this game. Yeah, the play I like here is search for a Trubbish and uh, either N or Versus Seeker for next turn. You need to get that one prize attacker into play to uh, combat your opponent's Trash Lanch. And then you can simply end your opponent next turn and then attach the Psychic Energy to Tapu Lele GX Energy Drive for the knockout and uh, set yourself up that way. But it looks like Alex is going for double colorless energy and N, so he's going to go for the Berserk plan. So there we see. Uh, he can attack here. He has a Versus Seeker to help him out next turn. Maybe that's where the very desperate N would come into play. And, huh, actually just going to go ahead and Energy Drive, save his double colorless for next turn, and there's a knockout. Yeah, he might play some retreating games here where he gets a knockout with Tapu Lele, takes a hit, retreats, goes up to Drampa, uh, has another fresh Pokemon GX, 
Uh, it just feels like eventually one of those GX GXs are uh, is going to get knocked out, and then it's going to be game over. I really would have liked to see one more uh, trash Avalanche Garboder come into play to force another one prize knockout. Yeah, we saw him was debating the Trubbish at one point and ended up grabbing Versus Seeker instead. I think just uh, terrified that if he can't add, he would just get uh, blown over as well. It's a, it's a tough spot to be in when you don't have all the resources for all the combos that you're looking for. Yeah, on the other side, Nyoto with the teammates getting exactly what he wants. Uh, and we see a field blower here getting rid of the Po Town and the Floatstone on his opponent's Garboder. That's going to put more item cards in the discard pile. Uh, I don't think we're anywhere near a Trash Alanche knockout on Tapu Lele GX, but just something to keep in mind. So here we see Ultra Ball as well. Uh, Golisopod back into play once again. Another card that could just apply incredible pressure. And here we see retreating up. First impression, 120. That leaves himself with one card in hand. Gotta wonder what that last card is. Uh, if it's something like a Guzma, he can just set himself up for the win next turn. And that has to concern Alex. But uh, you're in this weird spot where if you end your opponent, you actually give them more cards than they have. But if their one card is the game winner, well, then you lose. <laughs> yeah, that can be uh, sometimes the ultimate bluff. You just hold the one card and try and convince your opponent that it was a good one. <laughs> it, for all we know, it could be nothing. I think it actually is something solid. I think it's like a Sycamore. Yeah, I mean, I have to assume it's something good after your opponent plays teammates. So Alex will play the end here. He won't be able to get a knockout on this turn, but uh, he is going to be put in danger. If Naoto draws Guzma, he wins the game, targeting down this Tapu Lele GX. But Alex is going to do everything he can, put on the pressure, Berserk for 180 damage, and cross his fingers that his opponent does not draw out of this. Well, here we go. There's Berserk for the 180. We'll have to see what Naoto got off of his prizes. Or sorry, not off his prizes, off of his two cards. Oh. Versus Seeker. Here we go. Uh, just Guzma for game, right? That's it. Yep. Bring out the Tapu Lele GX. Retreat back into Galisapa GX. Your boy Guzma and Galisapa GX. A fierce combination. And that will pretty much lock Naoto into the top eight here at the World Championships. So we have one Japanese player well on their way to the top eight here at the World Championships. It's uh, sort of a match made in heaven. You have a card that requires you to switch a lot. Then you have a card that's Lysander stable to a switch. It turns out that they work very well. I was actually surprised at how few times we saw Trash Alange in this mirror matchup uh, over on Naoto's side. It was just mostly Galisopod hits. Yeah, uh, Galisopod GX is incredibly powerful against the Drampa version of this deck. And we saw a big difference between the match we saw in round one between Takeshi and Tord, where uh, Takeshi struggled a lot because he never found his basic grass energy to use Galisopod GX, always forced to use rainbow energy to power up his Pokemon. And then Tord simply responded with Drampa GX using Righteous Edge to discard the energy. We saw what happened in that matchup when there is basic energy in play. Yeah. Uh, Galisopod GX is just too much to deal with. And we saw it's not extremely significant, but I think it did end up coming into play here. Uh, he did run one more copy of the basic grass, and I think that that's a big deal in this matchup when you're trying to avoid Righteous Edge. We, I don't think we saw a single energy discarded off of a Righteous Edge. Yeah. Uh, so we do have a secondary match ready for you guys. Uh, we are going to hop into... A other match we have uh, since this one ended a little quickly. So we have some more bonus action here from round number seven. And we'll see how this one's going to end up. Hey, we take those. Looks like we're getting the deck list in now so we can figure out what's going on. Perhaps what the game count is as well. We have, it looks like a Japanese player versus another Japanese player. Indeed, uh, a name I, re I recognize, Tosa, is going up here. Uh, and we're going to see what two decks looks like a Gardevoir GX against one of these Ho-Oh decks. And we can see that here. Uh, should be an interesting matchup that we're going to get in the middle of between these two Japanese players fighting for a chance to be in the top eight at the World Championships. Uh, there's always the question, 
as we enter the World Championships. Will the Japanese players be able to adapt to our format? They actually play a different format in Japan than they do in the rest of the world. Uh, they play with all cards from the XY expansions and all the way up to the Sun and Moon sets. Uh, whereas everywhere else we play with XY, Primal, Clash, and On. So will they be able to adapt to this environment? And the answer is a resounding yes. Uh, there were some years where that wasn't true, but this sure. year <laughs> it is certainly true. Yeah, some uh, years J uh, Japan will come with a deck that's just so crazy that it just doesn't work. Uh, something that just like isn't suited for the format. This time everything is so crazy that it does work. Yep, so we do see uh, the Gardevoir GX deck on the left and the Ho-Oh GX on the right. We have Masataka Hirano versus Takeshi Tosa. Uh, Tosa is a veteran of the World Championships. He is qualified, I remember, through the last chance qualifier a couple times. Uh, great player. And uh, it looks like they are tied at one game apiece. Looking to win this third game and get a fifth win putting themselves in a position to win the last round and advance to the top eight. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure what the prize count is. It looks like at least one prize was taken um, on one of these sides. But this is game three, and both players are playing very fast, trying to conclude it one way or another. Wonder Energy down in the Curlia, followed by an N. Uh, <laughs> notice that we have the Starmie uh, up in the active position, or Staryu Star up in the yeah. active position. Starmie in the deck. I actually really like that. Use the beacon to get uh, extra energy uh, so that you can bring them back down with the Gardevoir. Fun little tuck. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of beacons going on. There's Alolan Vulpix to beacon. There's Starmie's space beacon. Uh, I guess it's just the beacon deck. <laughs> He's, does he have the Alola uh, Vulpix in here as well? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's what got knocked out in the last turn. So here we see... Uh, not sure if we'll be able to attack this turn, just trying to sort of bide time, throwing up Sudowoodo. Uh, no Gardevoirs out yet. Yeah, I was actually very curious to know what this matchup would be like. These are, uh, uh, the Ho-Oh GX deck looks awesome to me on paper with the Kiawe uh, getting four energy into play immediately, as we see on the benched Ho-Oh GX, and then the Salazzle GX. How would having so much energy on your main attacker stack up against a Gardevoir GX that punishes you for having so many energy? Or does it not even matter? Does the raw power of Ho-Oh GX uh, just overcome that deficit, but this looks like an even matchup so far, and we'll see if uh, Tosa can finish it off. Looks like he has a lot of energy in play right now, or uh, if his opponent can overwhelm him with Gardevoir GX. I feel like a big thing for the Ho-Oh -Oh is that it's taking two prize knockouts while it's out there, while it's existing. Of course, your opponent is almost always offering a two prize knockout when you have things like Tapu Lele. Uh, right now, it looks like he was able had to take a one prize knockout just to start. So it's uh, the quicker you take knockouts, the quicker you can finish the game with Salazzle. We'll have to see uh, how that ends up coming into play. Yeah, so just some other information uh, we've been provided about this match. Uh, Takeshi Tosa earlier in the match played five Pokemon on his bench, even though his opponent had Sudowoodo's roadblock in effect. And as a show of sportsmanship, his opponent... De uh, declined to take the prize penalty. So respect being shown between these two players. And uh, there's also a big time extension in the round as well. So we should have plenty of time to finish this match. And it certainly seems like we have some heavy hitters going already. So uh, lots of knockouts on the way. So we see a Sycamore coming on Takeshi's side. Tons of uh, cards, no energy, but he has a lot of energy in play already. Yeah, we'll see if he can knock out this pseudo Wudo. Uh, it's awkward because I don't think you want to put out any like good attacker out there to attack a pseudo Wudo for a knockout. Uh, you don't want to like send out Ho -Oh GX and do 180 damage just to knock out pseudo Wudo. Uh, put it in harm's way against a Gardevoir GX. Uh, Salazzle GX can do 110 damage. That might be the way to go. Yeah, just but, two for 110. Yeah, but again, that's a little risky. Uh, you have two energy on there. You're putting a, a good attacker in danger, but it would take quite a few energy cards from Masataka Hirano to have uh, an infinite force for a knockout here. All right, well, starting off with the rescue stretcher, getting a Gardevoir into play. 
So we'll be able to attack. Oh, double Gardevoir GX into play, oh, actually. that's a good start. And here's Sycamore. That's one way to get a bunch of energy down and get this knockout. Let's see if he gets off the Sycamore. So he needs double Ooh. Colos energy uh, and then two Fairy energy or uh, Fairy energy and a Choice Band. Well, he's got double Colos and two Fairies if he wants to go that route. Let's see. So he needs seven total energy or six in the Choice Band to get the knockout on this Salazzle. Oh, wow. GX, but uh, will he be able to pull this off? Uh, He's even got Starmie out there, so he can Ultra Ball away those Fairy Energy and get them right back. Yeah, Space Beacon uh, getting the energy back in. Very clever tech card that works well here. So there we see uh, pitching the cards. And you can see why Gardevoir GX was one of the most feared cards coming into this weekend. It looked like a very innocent board from Masataka. A couple Curlia with one energy each. And uh, next turn, knocking out a 200 HP Pokemon. Yeah, that is ridiculous. And also, I don't know, uh, unless Takeshi can get like a bunch of steam ups or something, it's going to be hard to get a knockout here. Uh, he needs a uh, choice man and one steam up. That gets the knockout with OOGX. Yeah, I guess. Yep, yeah, 180 plus 60. There's the combination. Yeah, the problem is there's another Gardevoir GX waiting. And again, you need four energy to use Phoenix Burn. You can knock out this one Gardevoir GX, but then there's another one waiting. And then it's not like you can just get four more energy onto the next Pokemon to power up uh, another ho -Oh GX. You can only really Kiawe once in a game since it ends your turn. You do it early on and later in the game, you can't really afford to do it. Ending your turn is just too big of a cost once your opponent is completely set up. So he'll get a knockout here with Steam Up and Choice Band. But if his opponent is able to get enough energy to uh, secret or secret spring and then attach double colorless, use infinite force for another knockout with Gardevoir GX, boy, I don't know how Tosa is going to come back from that. Yeah, and no, I don't think we saw any kind of like disruption card, like an end or anything. So uh, Masataka should, I, I don't know if he has access to the double colorless or not, but uh, that space beacon really helps uh, accelerating extra energy into play. And uh, Ho really helps just by having four energy on it. Indeed. So this match is still up in the air, but it looks like Masataka Hirano has the upper hand in this situation. His opponent will go down to two prize cards this turn, but then his only real uh, attacking option will be out of the way. And it's going to be tough to find a way out from here. And I, uh, there's no special condition on that Volcanian, <laughs> is there right now? No, he uh, kind of tapped it to signify that he's used Steam Up already. Okay. <laughs> just wanted to make sure for any viewers coming and says, wait, doesn't that mean it's asleep? <laughs> uh, no, he's just... Uh, Normally, yes. To signify. But uh, it, it's able to retreat just fine with the Float Stone. He has a knockout. It's just figuring out, like, how do you even follow up after that? You kind of wanted the Salazzle uh, oh, as yeah. your end game hitter. That would have been big. He did get the Salandit down, but decided to attach to the ho -Oh GX. I feel like I would want one on Salazzle if I'm going to take two prize cards here. Uh, have a 200 damage attack possibly to follow up with. Certainly Interesting. what it feels like, yeah. Well, comes back over to Masataka, and we'll have to see if he can get the knockout. Um, ho -Oh has done a lot of the work for him already just by having four energy on it. Yeah, he's going to play N here. Uh, all he needs is a third energy to use Infinite Force for 210 and knock out ho -Oh GX. And he certainly has access to the energy thanks to Starmie's Space Beacon. It's a card we've seen a lot more of in the past three months or so, uh, typically in Volcanion decks, sometimes in Greninja, and now seeing it in Gardevoir GX as well. Uh, any deck that just needs to constantly have energy from your hand Starmie has proven to be useful. Yeah, so here we go. For example, easy way to make sure all you had to do was attach one energy from hand, didn't get one out of draws. You can just get one from the Space Beacon, knock out this way. And so there we see two prizes, two prizes, one EX knockout or GX knockout will close the game for either player. Yeah, but what can Tosa do here? Uh, we might just have to see a power heater from his Volcanion. I think he might want to play an N in this situation to limit his opponent's options. It could be a game-winning Guzma next turn if he doesn't play an end here. But uh, uh, the ball is certainly in Masataka's court. If he can draw the right cards, he will win the game next turn. 
And his opponent's just gonna play Professor Sycamore. Oh, so his hand not disrupted at all. Drawing through, I don't really see any energy. Ooh. I see the Salazzle GX, but it, I don't even know if attaching to it would have mattered like we were talking about last turn, just because he doesn't even have the second energy to it. Right. No uh, energy at all. Super uh, Rod can get energy back in the deck, but not in your hand. Yeah, it certainly seemed like he should have attached his Salandit last turn, at least give himself a play for the energy plus choice band for the Diabolical Claws for the win, or energy and Guzma targeting down a Tapu Lele GX for the win, but uh, opted to attach to the ho -Oh GX instead. And he might be just a turn or two short here of closing out this game if Masataka could find a Guzma or Lysander to finish it off. It's one of the most difficult things against the Gardevoir GX deck is if you can't knock it out, if you can't deal with it, it continues to get bigger and more scary. So here we go, just hoping that Masataka has no Versa Seeker, Guzma, Lysander, any of those very easy to access options. Here we see Choice Band. Oh, I think Attached that's it. Versa Seeker, there we go. With no end able to uh, bring his hand size down, he's able to just close the game out with the resources he had in hand. Indeed, so there we see Guzma retreat, Gardevoir GX coming back out. The Infinite Force knocking out that Tapu Lele GX and bang, just like that, Masataka Hirano blows through all of Takeshi Tosa's attackers with that Gardevoir GX.